Hello and welcome to this iteration of my recreational tactics series, where we intend to replicate real managerial tactics in FIFA as true to life as possible. Today we are looking at Julian Nagelsmann's Bayern Munich. I'm going to preface this by saying that I have tested and played these, this tactic on my own personal sliders, which should be on your screen now. Um, I do this because I feel like it adds that extra layer of um, realism to FIFA, as in its base form it just isn't as much of a football sim simulator at all. And so I'd highly recommend playing with sliders if you do want to play uh, with a more realistic experience. Now, as of recording this, they've just lost to an otherwise underachieving Borussia Mönchengladbach. But that aside, they've more or less steamrolled every opposition in their way this season, including a perfect run in the Champions League group stage. So, we'll jump straight into the formation here. Uh, to 4 2 3 1, obviously, uh, there are a couple changes you will want to make. The first, we've pushed Davies up to a left wing back position here. Um, secondly, we've pushed Goretka here up to left central midfield. And then, thirdly, we've pushed Sane and Nabry up to wingers. Now, the reason we've put Davies onto left wing back um, is to provide the, the width on the left side, which we'll get into more in the instructions. What he does is he pushes all the way up um, and Sané tucks inside while uh, Pavard, Pavard rather, stays back and forms that back three. And so in essence it does create that kind of 3-4-2-1 that uh, Nagsman has in possession rather. It creates that 3-4-2-1 that Nagsman has preferred throughout his career and was very prominent at Leipzig. Um, the switch for Goretzka to left centre midfield is to push him higher up the pitch than um, Kimmich. Because um, what happens when they're building up is that Kimmich will um, hold those deep positions for the back line to feed him into and show for the ball, while Gretzka pushes forward and holds a more advanced position, um, like deeper. Um, but those are the only changes you need to make to the formation. So, on to the tactics. Now, I started with constant pressure, because he really is the epitome of that, you know modern German philosophy of a, of a Gagan press, this very intense high press immediately after you lose the ball, um, and then throughout the pitch across all thirds from all players. Um, but what you find on Fever is unless you're playing a very possession heavy um, system, that's just it's just not feasible. Your players can't spend all 90 minutes constantly running, they'll, they'll die by half time. Um, and so this is the nice middle ground I found was to play with it on press after possession loss, um, 90 depth, and then I'll get into the instructions. We've played everyone on aggressive interceptions. Um, it's a man press that he plays, but that's there's no option to really replicate that in your defensive tactics here. The best you can do is use instructions that are somewhat man marking. But even then, man marking is kind of dead on FIFA, so there's not much you can do in the way of replicating that, unfortunately. Um, Width-wise, most tactics you will be narrow, I probably all 30 or under, um, and generally lower. But you want to have up to 25 here to supplement the, um, the press when they do play it out to the wings, to make sure your players do actually push out and pounce on top of that. And then obviously depth 90 is self-explanatory, they play a very high line. Now, on um, offense, you want to have... Uh, oh, sorry, and one last thing for defense. What you will find me doing on um, from goal kicks, I will activate a team press that is down on your D-pad followed by left on your D-pad. And that activates the team press. Um, and that just ensures that despite... Because the press after possession loss doesn't count... Um, dead balls as a possession loss or like short after possession loss for some reason so in order to get that high press instigator there you will have to use um, a team press yourself manually now on to offensive tactics you're going to start with slow build up your chance creation will be on forward runs you're going to have 45 width 9 players in box and 4 and 4 for corners and free kicks now for your build up play on slow build up unlike um, flicks by Munich um, Nagelsmann is actually very comfortable um, playing out from the back. They're quite patient in their build-up initially until they can find a clear way forward, um, usually through Kimmich, with his amazing passing, um, both in terms of accuracy and range. Um, but once they are in the opposition's half, 
they're very aggressive. Players flood forward into the spaces. They completely overload the opposition's defense, and more, more often than not, there will be a spare man for a ball to be found through because they just have advantage in numbers. Now, width-wise, what they tend to do on the Nagelsmann is uh, overload the center. Um, so they'll have generally one um, skillful player out on each wing, on each touchline. Usually Nabry on the right and um, Davies on the left. And everyone else will be at like at least in line with the, like at least in line with the box here um, and fill those center holes to sort of not be narrow but close enough together to cut through opposition with quick passing um, but what you will find if you have it um, any lower is that a your wingers don't sit on the touchline enough but b you won't get the likes of muller um, drifting out onto the wing um, enough or Kimmich to like cross it in um, and you want them to be doing that to bring Nabry into the game once again we'll get into the instructions but that's why I found 45 to be that sweet spot where they still generally are um, playing centrally besides the one player on each touchline but does allow for more interplay between those actual wide players um, along with those central players players in box alongside corners and free kicks all go hand in hand because um, another sort of staple of Nagelsmann's Bayern is that they really you know, um, crowd the box. They throw players into the box as many as they can, once again working that man advantage and it doesn't usually lead them being caught out in defence because of that counter press, um, which I guess counters the counter attack. <laughs> um, so that's their tactics um, in a nutshell. Now, onto the instructions. So, we'll start with Neuer. Fairly self explanatory. Oh, one quick forewarning actually. I'm going to have every outfielder on aggressive interceptions, as you can kind of see here. Um, and, like I explained um, at the press after possession loss, this is just to kind of, you know, um, retain some semblance of intensity um, in the press off the ball, even after seven seconds have elapsed and they've, you know, they've been forced back into more of a mid block by the opposition pushing forward. They do still look to aggressively press the opposition and cut off their passing lanes and close in on them um, in all areas of the pitch. And that just helps to replicate that a little bit more when you're not playing with constant pressure. And it's not perfect, but it's the best way I've found to be able to replicate it without absolutely killing the players. Now, Back to Neuer, um, comes across as sweeper keeper, fairly self-explanatory. He's very commanding, he's revolutionized the modern sweeper keeper role. He's, besides maybe Edison, um, he's one of the only keepers who could honestly walk into many midfields in the world, I feel like. Um, his passing is that accurate and he's that brave, um, pushing out onto the ball, that comfortable on it. Um, center halves, nothing changed besides aggressive interceptions, nothing else really needs to change. Um, left back will go now um, Davies is obviously a converted winger he bombs forward down the touchline with you know ridiculous pace and overlaps Sané which allows Sané to then cut inside um, so that's why he's on oh sorry that's why he's on join the attack and overlap um, step up and aggressive interceptions aggressive interceptions I've explained Mark explained to every player step up is going to be the same for both Pavard and Davies um, and that's to supplement the man press. It's one of the few instructions in the game that actually do make players, well, at least in theory, make players stick to their man. How well that works in FIFA is up for debate, but it's better to have it on than not have it. Um, Pavard here, he does the opposite of Davies. He's not a centre-back converted, but he's always been more defensively minded. So he stays back while attacking, makes inverted runs. And he's also going to step up. So stay back and inverted ensures he tucks into um, sort of like a third centre-back in the build-up play. Um, and therefore allowing David to push up com more comfortably. And just provide them more passing options in that slow build-up. Um, and then like I explained, step up, supplementing that man press. Now, Kimmich, the final instruction we have to supplement that man press, man mark, duh. Uh, he's also on stay back while attacking, aggressive interceptions, Cover centre, free your own. Now, man mark 
once again, really want to supplement their man press that um, Nagelman has instructed to his players. Stay back while attacking is for sure he fills those deeper pockets and provide the passing option for the back three. Um, and free roam so he's constantly showing for the ball alongside stay back. He's not um, holding one position, but he's always roaming to be able to receive, turn and play it forward. And the cover center, he's not the fastest, um, but he's probably the best defensive um, midfielder that they have. And so you want him, you know, filling that central um, area of the field, like a classic defensive midfielder would. Now, Goretzka is going to be on get forward, bounce crossing rounds, aggressive interceptions, stick to position and cover wing. Get forward, he's uh, very much a box-to-box -box midfielder. He really does like to get high up the field and fill those, you know, take up position, those more advanced pockets of space to receive the ball. And then either drive with it or feed it into some one of the more creative players like more Nabri um, Sane. Or even try and play it through to Lewandowski if you can find him. Um, and so you really do want him pushing up the field to provide that numbers advantage. Now, I was tempted to play him and get into the box because he does drive into the box a lot, makes a lot of late runs into the box. Um, what you will find is sometimes if that run isn't on or if other players have already flooded in, like if Davies, Sané, Muller, Nabry, Lewandowski are all already in the box, he'll sit off and provide a passing option at the edge of the box. And with the nine players getting into the box, bounce crossing runs, you will find him running into the box more often than not. And he'll, he'll score you plenty of goals running in. I don't think he scored any in the um, match I've got recorded playing for you right now. In the background. But in the testing matches, he, beside after Lewandowski and Muller, he was probably my top scorer. Um, aggressive interceptions. Stick to position. You don't want him constantly roaming. When he pushes up, you want him to kind of hold that position there. Um... If he's constantly drifting across, it'll mean Mull will have to drift, out, drift elsewhere, it'll mean Kimmich will have to drift elsewhere, Nabi will put, and Sane might be forced to stay wide, which means Davies can't overlap. You, you just want him to be a bit more of a consistent um, option on that left side central midfield, pushing up. And cover wing is just to provide that bit of cover for Davies on the left, um, with him pushing all the way up like almost a winger. If he does get caught out, you want Gretzka to automatically be running out there to cover that, because you may not have time to do it manually. Now, Muller, the infamous Ram Douter. Ram, Ram Douter? Ram, Ram, Ram Douter. Anyway, um, I toyed with him on um, centre forward, on um, drift wide, false nine, and come back on defence. But to A, uh, supplement the press, and B, make him a little bit more of a goal threat. Um, but what I found was those benefits were kind of negligible, like he didn't drive into the box much more often than he would on attacking midfield. Um, and he didn't really supplement the press anymore either, when the press was on he still pushes up and presses with attack midfield. And with the team press, when you have to manually activate it, having him centre forward he fills the same spot as he would in attacking midfield anyway. Um, and it came at the cost of him being a bit more of a creative outlet, he was more of a goal threat of course, he was high up the field. But he was sort of filling positions to cross in or play through balls a lot less, which isn't what he does. He does take up those aggressive positions and he will still attack in the field, but he is the side primary playmaker. Primary playmaker of the Bundesliga, really. So you want him on comeback and defense, get into the box for cross, drift wide and aggressive interceptions. Comeback and defense, supplementing that press, getting into the box for cross to make those driving runs like we just talked about. And that drift wide. Ideally, what it does do is you've got you've got Goretzka pushed all the way up here. You've got Davies pushed all the way up here, which means San is out here. So this space should be filled by the, them, those three. So theoretically, it should be forcing him to drift out wider this way. How often that happens in game, once again, jury's out on that one. Um, but it's the best way you can kind of replicate him drifting out into those right half spaces to put crosses in, um, or even further out to touchline and allowing Nabry to tuck inside behind him in a bit of an underlap. Um, so that's the best of an able to replicate the Ram Doubter. Now, wingers play differently, but I have settled on the same instructions for both. 
and that is come back on defense, cut inside, get in behind, get into the box across, and aggressive interceptions. For different reasons. So we'll start with Sané. Um, he plays that inverted winger or inside forward, more inverted winger. Um, when Davies pushes up and overlaps him. Um, so that's what the cut inside is sort of there to supplement. Um, when that overlap is on, he will drift in field. Um, getting behind his fellow, so explanatory for the winger with buy or for Bayern, really aggressively pushing forward, looking for the through ball. Same with getting into the box for cross, providing those options in the box for goal scoring opportunities, overloading the box. Um, come back on defence. I wanted to play him on either stay forward or bounce defence because in the press. Lewandowski, Muller and Sané almost form like a front three. Um, whereas Naby is the one who would drop back. And it's those sort of front three that press hard on the defenders and the goalkeeper to force the ball out wide to a fullback. In which case, either Davies on the left or Naby on the right will really aggressively push that player. when those And those front three will close in from the side and try and like box them in against the touchline and win the ball back there while Gretzkin can make man-mark their options in the midfield. But, playing on safe forward or basic defence support, that he didn't actually track back when the frontal press was broken, um, which just wasn't viable with Davies also pushed way up the field. You can see way too many opportunities down that flank. Um, and so with aggressive interceptions and that high line, he will still press aggressively from the front, but no more than Nabry does, which is unfortunate, but it's a necessary loss. Now, Nabry, once again, get him behind, get into the box across a fairly self-explanatory. Come back on offense for him is more realistic. He does drop back that more, a bit more, and man mark any options out wide. And then when the ball is forced out wide to a fullback with a poor touch, then pushes forward onto it um, from that deeper position. Now, cut inside, initially I played with them on stay wide, then I switched to balance width, and then I finally settled on cut inside. Because like I've explained, if you've been paying attention, Nabry holds the width on the right, while Davis holds the width on the left, um, and then Sané will be the one who cuts inside, next to Muller. But without any overlap on the right, either from Pavard or from Kimmich being on stay back while attacking and stay back while attacking, that widest play on the right will automatically be Nabry, so even though he's on the cut inside, if there's no one else there, if he's all on by himself out here, he will still hold that width way more often than not. Um, and what you will find on cut inside is that when we do get Muller uh, drifting out here, if he's on bounce width or stay wide, he'll just kind of like hover here awkwardly, not doing anything. Nabry that is. Whereas when Muller drifts out here and you've got him on cut inside, you will actually find him making that underlap from like there, which is once again a better replication of how he plays. So it's a weird one because it's the instruction is telling you the opposite of what he will be doing most of the match, but for this situation, I guess FIFA's poor effort in their programming works out in our favour. Um, and finally, on to Lewandowski. Stay central target man aggressive interceptions stay forward um stay central um and stay forward are both fairly self-explanatory again he really does you know lead that press from the front and he's that focal point in the attack you don't want him drifting out wide you don't want him dropping all the way back on defense you want him to be that sort of tip of the spear um now target man he's not your classic target man in the way that he'll like win the ball and knock it down to another runner. He will do that sometimes. But he's no like Lukaku who's attempting to head it back down to other runners who are uh, who are those runners being the primary goal scorers. But what he is is a real ball to feet player. He sort of has his back to the defender, he calls the ball, balls played into him, he turns the defender and he shoots. And he scores 10, 15 goals a season from that exact move. His first touch, his turn I was just so rehearsed and choreographed, pinpoint perfect. Um, so that's how you can best replicate that. On FIFA, how well turning and shooting works when it's played into feet. 
I'm not even going to sugarcoat it. It's not great. You've seen it a few times in the match. I've just punted it straight into the defender or even just hit the keeper. Um, I don't know what that's about because he's probably got, I'd wager he's got the best shooting in the game um, statistically, but what can you do? So, I believe that's just about everything covered. So, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was informative. Um, there'll be a few more taxes coming out um, soon. Um, next one will probably be Ten Hag's Ajax. Expect that in the next few days. Um, and last little thing. Um, in the description, I will have the links to Geography for Discord and YouTube. Please go check them out. I'm not going to recite the same thing at the end of every video, but he's an absolute top bloke. Um, cannot recommend his YouTube channel enough. The Discord server is a great little community. Um, um, and he's the one who really, you know, provided me with this platform to, you know, ta do tactics for FIFA. Um, so cannot recommend him enough. Um, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.